Hey, what's going on everyone? We're gonna look at a couple of charts and IEMs to stay away from. So, the first chart is of the Monarch MK2. And honestly, whoever tells you they could, uh, they know how the bass sounds just by looking at the chart. Um, they might not have much experience with audio, which is fine. So, the bass is slightly boosted, like 6 or 7 decibels, so it doesn't have like a major bass boost. And then basically from the bass to the mid-range, up until 2k, it performs really well. And then after 4k, everything just goes downhill. Um, there's a dip down here at 4.5k. Uh, another dip here at 7k and then anything above that is completely missing so there's just one peak and then a dip and you really don't want to see that you do want to see it taper off slowly so and this IEM costs a grand and it's completely trash I don't know how people are recommending this so basically after 10k you don't get any type of treble air sounds overly smooth i reviewed this i am but i guess i'm gonna explain a little bit more in depth so basically you lose the sense of space the sense of imaging and sound stage um there's it really does lack reverb um so anything above 10k it's completely gone you're not gonna hear it um any air sounds any clear sound you're, it's just not there so you definitely want to stay away from that. The bass to mid range is pretty good, but anything above 10k is gone. And I've act I actually reviewed this IEM, so I already heard it and I'm explaining this. So yeah, no resolution above 10k. Uh, the mids are decent. Um, yeah, so this one basically from the bass to the mids, it's actually pretty good um but there's a bunch of these dips you really really don't want to see that and you do want to see it taper off so yeah that's uh monarch mark twos um yeah let's talk about the seven hertz timeless now so for this one you're gonna notice again it has about the same amount of bass uh boost like seven decibels but honestly, you would have to listen to these side by side to know, like, which one sounds like this, which one sounds like... You can't just look at a chart and know how half of these IEMs sound. But anyways, so, this one from the bass to the mid-range, it's fairly, uh, we're actually really well. Um, there's not any off-putting things I see from the bass to the mid-range. Uh, it follows the target really well. There is a shallow insertion peak, which really doesn't, um, uh, it's not really a peak in a bad way. It's just a shallow insertion peak. So it's not going to sound harsh up here as the chart may suggest. And then where you're going to notice is above 10K, this IEM, um, style is going on. Okay. So sorry about that. So basically this im has a lot of air as you can see from 10k to 20k it's not peaky at all it you just get a lot of air so this im is exceptional i did a bunch of reviews i did a review on all of these ims i'm talking about so i actually had a chance to listen to them before i made this video um yeah so really good chart i don't see much wrong for the price, it's actually exceptional because I haven't seen an IEM in this price range um, perform this well. So it's actually a nice surprise. Um, and yeah, so this one looks really good and it sounds really good. So yeah, this sounds better than a lot of IEMs that cost way more. So this is a 7 hertz timeless. Um, there's not any issues with the frequency response of this earphone, honestly. It performs well from uh, top to bottom. It's not harsh, fatiguing, or any of that stuff. So yeah, now on to the Kato. So again, this one does a good job, or a decent job, from the bass to the mid-range. 
Uh, and you probably won't see it in the chart, but the mid bass on this earphone is extremely boosted. Um, it, you might not uh, notice that by just looking at the chart, but yeah, the bass is really, really boosted. The mid bass, extremely elevated. And then where the problems occur again is uh, in the treble. This uh, earphone has like no treble. Uh, you see one peak and then it drops quick. So you do miss a lot of information uh, from 10 to 15K. So again, it's a useless IEM. It doesn't do much. So I'm not sure how people are recommending this IEM. So yeah, now let's talk about the 64 Audio U12T. So this one, from the bass to the mid-range, does a really good job. Um, there is this slight scoop which uh, lends the vocals to be slightly, um, not recessed, but slightly pulled back. So yeah, that's what this uh, little scoop is. And then above 10K, again, you get a lot of air. So from the bass to the treble, this IEM does an excellent job. You're not missing any frequencies up here. So if you listen to like a trumpet, um, piano a trumpet piano a flute where monarch mark mk2 is going to completely dull it out not sound realistic at all uh pretty bad actually and then the seven hertz timeless if you play those same instruments is going to do a phenomenal job um it's going to have airiness without being harsh and then the kato again it has no resolution um there it just the treble is completely gone um there's just one peak which makes it sound extremely sharp and harsh so yeah i wouldn't recommend the kato or the monarch mk2s they're just flawed and i actually had a chance to listen to these ims so yeah this one is basically has nothing above 10k just one peak a dip here a dip here and you do hear that so if you have somewhat even of an experience, you definitely hear these things. So yeah, I don't think it's like the end-all be-all. You do have to try out a lot of these IEMs. But yeah, looking at the charts is helpful. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. And yeah, have a good one.